doing today. I want to work on this beautiful, I'm going to call it a flower. <laughs> and what it is, it is made with the octagon shape and the honeycomb shape. And at first I thought I was using one and a half inch pieces, but then I laid it down on my cutting board and realized they're all one and a quarter inch pieces. Um, and as long as this side equals this side, you're good to go. And remember, on the honeycomb, all sides are the same. So the first thing I want, want to do is show you how I wrap the honeycomb pieces. For me, it's either good to use a binder clip or a pen just to secure the fabric because I feel like on this shape, it tends to shift around a little bit. And then I don't end up with those tight corners that I like. So go ahead and finger press and then just start folding around in one direction. Just do a couple of stitches into the front and back, I'm sorry, into the back side only. So you don't wanna go through to the front. Now we're gonna fold it going the same way again. And I finger press that point. You can fold over, you can sew over this corner or you can go underneath. If this gets in your way and you like to pull it out of the way while you're sewing pieces together, I suggest that you go underneath. Just keep going, making sure that your points are really crisp. Now, none of these pieces actually hang over except for this end part. But on some things like diamonds, you'll end up with little tails. So it is extremely important on those shapes that everything goes the same so that they can nestle together. I do both. Sometimes I go underneath and sometimes I go over. Have it and then this of course will be your last one and just make sure that one is nice and crisp as well and then for your octagon it's basically going to be the same thing so there's that to finger press all the way around again. And the finger pressing just, for me, it helps keep everything in the same place. It's almost like it has a, a muscle memory of some sort. So just keep going around. And I probably don't need to show you this one since it's very similar to a hexagon and most of you have already done a regular hexagon. So you just keep going around like that. Until you are to the end. See, it doesn't take you long to, to thread base these. I know some people like to glue base, and that's perfectly fine as well. Okay, so now I'm done with this one. Let me show you how to put these honeycombs together, or at least how I have found that they go together nicely. What I do is I'll take two, put them side by side, 
First of all, see if I like how it looks. You know, some of these may have patterns and whatnot, and maybe a certain way looks better than another. So then I'll go ahead and just line them up exactly where they go. And then I'll stitch these two sides together. And of course, this is just a whip stitch. Of course, I'm having trouble just because I'm on, I'm on camera, right? So we'll go down this side. And for me, this is just the easiest way for me to put them together so that they look like they're all lined up properly. Now, of course, if you wanted to do the flat back stitch on this, that's fine as well. I find it helpful to use some type of tape, like masking tape or painter's tape to hold them lined up perfectly. So see, now we've got this little corner here. Oops make a little knot. So now I've got these two together. And then of course I'm at this end, so then I'll place it here. And then this is a great place if you wanted to do the flat back where you'll go ahead and tape it. And then you can flip it over and sew those together. Or the way I'm probably going to do it is just line these up really well. Make sure my corners are snug and then just whip stitch along this side, just like we did the first side. Oops, it came undone, but you get the idea. So then we'll end up with these three, it almost looks like a rocket ship. So I'm gonna set that down. Now it's gonna take several different petals to make one of these sunburst types of flowers. So go ahead and make all your petals in advance. And I've got my little rocket ship here. I'm going to sew this side together so you can line up these corners and whip stitch that. And then you may want to just flat back stitch the rest of it. But I would just go all the way around until you have your whole flower put together. Now I think this would be awesome as a way to use up scraps. So say you have a project and you just have little bits of each fabric. Say you wanna do a blue scrap quilt cause you all know I love blue and I've always got lots of blue. So just do three of each of your scraps until you end up with a blue scrap flower. Now, for this one, I'm actually kind of going for a spring vibe. And I'll probably end up making three or four of these total. I'm, I'm shooting for a wall hanging, but I haven't designed it completely yet. And I have auditioned different centers with this. At first, I loved this daisy. But then I kind of took a picture of it and I walked away and I said, I think that's too bright. And I said, well, what if I use one of the fabrics already in the flower? And then in my opinion, I thought it got lost. So then I just went to my collection and I found a lighter yellow. Um, this is actually one of the fabrics that came from Santa in my stocking this year. So I have decided on this lighter yellow. So what I'll do is I'll make several more of these and then I'll do another video and show you what I've done with them all. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. Please like and subscribe. Find me on my Facebook group, and I'd love to hear from you. Happy sewing.